Um, again, I'm with uh, Craig Hamsman with Central Vacuum Stores, and um, we sell do-it-yourself products uh, for um, such as obviously Central Vacuums, intercom systems, structure wiring, bath fans, ironing centers, anything that you could put in your home and you install. Um, we, our main is, thing is B2C. We do do, do a lot of B2B. And um, we went online when I came on about 14 years ago. And it's, uh, it's definitely been successful. And we've uh, used a new number of uh, outsourcing partners that we've uh, acquired over the years. And we definitely have, uh, have learned some um, difficult things along the way. How many here have never outsourced? Is there anybody here that's never outsourced? So pretty much um, everybody has their experiences. So I'm going to share. Um, in a minute, I'm going to share five of situations that have happened to us, and um, hopefully, uh, through our things we've learned, people can not make the same mistakes that we've made over the years. Um, I think of a website is it's. I think it's a lot more personal than a lot of us uh, tend to think. You know, if you think about it, you spend 40, 50, 60 hours a week uh, doing your website, and it's 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 pretty important to all of us. So I think that comes into play with. Um, deciding to outsource and trusting somebody with, with your business and if they're going to do a good job, if they're not going to do a good job, if they're going to do what they said they're going to do or they're not. And so, and a lot of that comes with whether you're going to be, are you going to be over demanding or not demanding enough and, and those kinds of things. And I also think that leads us to should we ask questions, shouldn't we ask questions, and, and all of those things have, have come into play and in, in things that we've experienced. Um, I want to start with um, the thing. I, I, one of the things I've learned over the years is, um, yes, you can do that. We're dealing with a salesperson. And uh, it's funny talking to some of these vendors. Uh, you know, I don't know how many people here have been bombarded with calls. Um, I'm constantly bombarded with them in email and everything. And it's because they're, they're wanting to sell something to us. And I know that we wine and dine and get to know, get to know people here. But in the end of the day, we have to remember that there are salespeople. And this is, it's about business. <clears throat> and along with that, um, nobody's good at everything. And I, I don't know, I've heard, uh, oh, I can do that. And oh, yes, we can do that. And um, we're experts at that. And you know, you get a, a lot, some offerings, they do one thing. And those are the ones I lean towards. I like to go with a company that focuses on one specific thing. So pay per click, and that's really all they do. Then you get some that they do a lot. And if you talk to them, they do a lot. Uh, they do all of it good, too, no matter what they do. And it's really hard to, to uh, figure out if they're good, if they're not. These are great resources. Here, meeting people, if you're thinking about outsourcing, you'd be surprised just meeting people and talking to people and saying, I'm thinking about using this company. They might say, well, I just talked to that person over there. You should go talk to them. I use that, them as a, as a company. And a couple other things. I mean, we all know you can ask for resources, uh, references. Um, the problem with references is everybody gives you good references. And that, that's the big concern. But I challenge you, ask for a reference for somebody that doesn't use them anymore. You know, you, you can't. If you don't get it, th it there's no harm. And um, when you call the references, you know, you want to control the conversation. You want to find out exactly what they did. Because if, if you get a company that does offer a lot of stuff, they might not be strong at what you're looking at. And if you ask them, they're going to tell you they're strong at everything. And that's where the sales, sales pitching always comes in. Um, into play. So when you call the references, you definitely want to do that. I definitely recommend going, I don't know how many people go to Google. I Google like, I'm thinking about this company complaints, this company problems. I go to the Better Business Bureau. The internet, um, once it's on there, it's typically sticks. You know, go to their Facebook page, anywhere you can find anything negative. And, you're, and I would bring it up. Say, I saw this, what do you think about this? Anything you possibly can um, to get as much information as you can before you, uh, you sign, sign the deal. And you know, I think of um, websites, there are branding. Our websites are branding, your websites are branding. Well, so is it for uh, a lot of these outsourcing companies. And I think of resumes. You know, I don't know how many people install Microsoft Office and then they put on the resume that they're proficient in it. You know, everybody pushes the envelope differently. Well, these companies, you know, being in sales, the bigger the net, the more the fish. So, and we're, you know, most of us here, we're fish. And, they want to get us in there. So you got to definitely do your homework. And, um, and when you go to the websites, too, I was, uh, you know, we're a small company. So uh, we're looking at a replatform. And I go to this website and talk to this lady. And they have all the big names that they've done business with. And she had Home Depot. So I'm like, well, we are a do-it-yourselfer. And um, 
So I asked her, what'd you guys do for Home Depot? I thought they replatformed or did the product page or something really big. Well, come to find out, they did really hardly anything. They did a little user testing, which was one of their offerings. So just because you see a big name doesn't mean they did a lot for that company. So I mean, I would just ask. I think sometimes maybe we feel like we're asking too many questions, but I don't think you can ask enough questions. Anyway, I'm gonna go over five instances that we've experienced over the, over the number of years and uh, some pit pitfalls that we've gone and, and things that have happened to us. And hopefully by that it can help other people not fall through the same pitfalls, including us. Um, the, uh, the first one is um, we wanted to outsource our pay-per-click. Now we always did our Google pay-per-click and, and uh, it was uh, Overture back then, all ourselves. It was very, very difficult to outsource pay-per-click. Um, we know our business, we know our customer, but we realized that we were losing a lot of the availability and things that Google, for example, was offering, because there's no way you could be that good at it and be good at your business. So we were dealing with uh, this one company, they were helping us out with SEO, and um, she, of course they said, well, we'll do your pay-per-click and we're excellent at it and we're great at it, and you know, the whole nine yards. But I like to check another company, and I was just to compare, so we checked this other company out, and that's all they did was pay-per-click, and I really, really liked them, but they were more money, and we were already working with this company. So we figured, you know, how, bad, how hard could this be? So we, we started with them. Two days later, our costs went up and our sales went down, like in two days. So of course, we're on the phone with the CEO, and we're really uh, f upset and frustrated, and she was telling us, you know, we're the experts, you hired us, you have to trust us, and it's very difficult. And one of the deals was for us not to touch anything. Well, when you've been running your Google campaigns all this time and your money is going out, it's hard not to want to touch. So we're doing everything we can, and two weeks later we fired them. So all that to say, I, I don't, don't be afraid to fire anyone. If you don't like it, I'd fire them. The learning thing for us there was, you know, no one knows your business better than you. And uh, it, no matter what they tell you, you know your business. And I think that was what the, because they knew that business or convinced us that they knew it so well, it made, you, made us feel like we didn't know what we were doing totally and we had to trust them. So nobody knows your business better than you, no matter what these people say. Um, the second uh, time we went to outsource, we were on this custom application that, that we use. Um, and um, it's, it, a lot of problems are with custom software. I don't have anybody here who uses custom software, but to develop anything, you have to go through testing and bugs and everything. It's never easy. So we wanted a site search, and we wanted one that was good. So I found two companies that that's all they do. And um, I talked to both of them, but it's really hard to, to decide between the two. And I just picked the one. It was kind of like one was the Cadillac and one was the Chevy. And I thought, well, we don't have this, and search is really important for people. If they don't find it quickly, they leave. So we went with this company, and um, everything went great. Our search worked awesome. But there was a, a component of the search uh, that was uh, the offering that was with Google that wasn't working. So of course, we emailed, and then we get this, oh, we're sorry, and we're working on it. And it's Google's fault, because they changed something, yada, yada, yada. And then this other company, you know, they keep in touch with me. So, you know, how, how are they doing? I'm like, well, we're having some problems. Of course, they said, well, we could do that. And we knew that was coming and, you know, the whole thing. They're, they're, they're really good at it. And um, so finally, we just decided, you know, we're going to switch. It was cheaper anyway. Um, it's just a search. So I, I said, it was all, our year was almost up. We had a year contract. And I sent them an email. And I come to find out, they said, well, you know, you had an auto renew. And I, I was in... What do you mean we had an auto renew? We had a year contract. She goes, well, it was 60 days. You had to give us notice, and then you auto renew. And I looked over the contract pretty well, but not that in detail. Um, so, so for that, uh, I can't stress enough contracts. Definitely you want to know your outs. Uh, that's one of my biggest questions. Um, how long is the contract? What, you know, what can we get out? I don't like to be locked in. That's one thing I hate. And the other thing that I think, and I don't know how many people do it, is you can change contracts. I mean, I can't stress changing a contract. Like, for example, this one, you can go back and say, well, I don't want 60 days. How about 15 days? They might come back and say 30. You can negotiate back and forth. Yeah, I think we're too used to you know, installing software. We just agree to terms constantly. Um, or you, know, you feel like you can't change it. And I also believe I would do anything you can to change a contract. And another reason why is if they're not willing to negotiate on the contract, I wouldn't do business with them. Because 
to me, if it's going to be that difficult up front, and they're not willing to move on anything, I don't know if I would do business with them. Because it looks like what's going to be down the road in the relationship. And I do everything I can to get the shortest um, cancellation as possible. I might never leave, but I hate being locked in. Um, well, that situation um, got a little bit difficult. It got a little hairy. Um, because the one component wasn't working and I had emails back and forth, so I basically uh, said they defaulted on their, their promise and we got out of that. And, but it was a really ugly situation. Um, I, I, I somewhat burned a bridge and, uh, and it was kind of unfortunate. So we go to this other company and of course they said they could do everything for us. Well, they did it and our search is nice, but it wasn't the search that we had expected. Um, we got used to this other search. There are a lot of our components and things that we wanted customers to see, they just weren't showing. And we did everything we could, and, and they just weren't able to do it th quite the same way. So we ended up going back. Um, so we didn't, we might have burned a bridge, but we didn't blow it up. So I tried to not blow a bridge up. Um, we were still partners with them, and it's been a really, really good partnership. Um, but again, I, I don't know how many of you change contracts, uh, but. I'm big on changing cancellations and payment terms. Those are my two biggies. Um, anybody here I've talked to, uh, the, and I love here when you, you'll say, well, it's $1,000 for the year, so it makes it feel better. Well, what if, what if you don't like it in two months? Do you get any money back? I mean, I just I like to ask and negotiate as much as you can. If you don't ask, you're not going to get. Um, my third uh, example of outsourcing is we're on this custom application that this, this friend of, the, uh, of ours had, had done over the years. And again, we don't want to test, we don't want to develop, so we wanted to uh, get a warehouse management system because we're growing. And um, that's the last thing we want to do is try and develop that. So we find this company and uh, you know, we're talking on the phone and we do at the time UPS and um, USPS and drop shipping. And drop shipping, if anybody ever does it, is complicated. Getting tracking numbers, if the vendors don't communicate, whether they have it in stock, you know, all kinds of complexity with drop shipping. Well, they're like, oh yeah, we definitely can do that. Well, talking to the guy on the phone, he kind of didn't seem like he really knew what we were talking about. That was the gut feeling that I got in my coworker. Well, of course, we're on the phone with the CEO He's from another country. He doesn't understand the same terminology. And, and you, know, you know, don't worry about it. We can do that. So of course, you know, it, it, we had to sign a three-year contract, negotiated that as much as possible. We sign on. We'll come to find out they don't do drop shipping as detailed as we needed. And uh, we couldn't ship postal for a period of time. So um, we weren't happy. <laughs> We're on the phone with the CEO and his team. And um, after talking, um, I said, I want out of the three-year contract period. Um, and he was fine. He said he was, felt bad about the miscommunication, but he, he came up to the plate with um, finances and they sent people to our site. So they actually did something and admitted to not knowing or miscommunicating. So that, that meant a lot. And um, today they're a very successful partner. But what I, the thing I think is important here is we didn't go with our gut. And again, I think it's because the website's personal. It's difficult, um, you're not sure, and it, it makes me think back um, uh, when I was a sales manager for Macy's uh, about 20 something years ago, and I had um, housewares, that was my department. And um, we would have Macy's one day sales, back then it was on Wednesdays. And uh, the idea was to pre-sell the sale. So people come in looking at a microwave or toaster, I could say, hey, I can ring you up for that now, you can have the sale price, I can put it in the back, you come back in, I give it to you, it's all, all wonderful. So we would pre-sell tons and tons of stuff by ringing people up. So what the problem was when the sale broke, people would come in and we wouldn't have the stuff they wanted because it was already sold to other customers. So it, it caused a lot of problems. Well, there was this one fella that he wanted a pressure cooker. And I have enough problems going on and he was real frustrated and he says to me, um, you know, my brother rang me up for this pressure cooker. So I go, who's your brother? Because you know, if your brother rang you up, he goes, well, it's none of your business who my brother is. And I go, well, if your brother rang you up, I want to know who it is because he shouldn't have done that. And anyway, after a few minutes, I'm um, coming to, to, to realize, did you mean your brother called you on the phone? And he said, that's what I've been saying. My brother rang me up. So I thought it was funny, and he did not think it was funny. And, and <laughs> it was a, but it, it, it taught me, wow, I, I just hear our miscommunicating. Well, going back to the drop shipping thing, this guy was from a foreign country. So all that to say, I think it's even more important that you 
that we talk to people, and if you don't think they understand something, we're, we're a global economy now. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know what customs they have. You, we should have said, well, let me tell you, let, explain drop ship shipping for me from A to Z. Don't assume that people know what you're talking about because they don't. And if you feel like they don't, chances are they don't. And, you know, I mean, we're getting, there's people from all over the world wanting to do business here. Languages is different. Customs are different. So um, I'm, I'm glad it all worked out, and that's an example of where it really came ba out bad. The, the, that company stepped up to the plate, and now it's a successful uh, venture. But it was, it was definitely difficult. The, um, the last two are the hardest. And the, the first one is our custom platform, because it's a friend. Of, um, of the family, of the company, and just a friend of all of ours. He's done our rollouts for years and years and years, and we trust, you know, definitely had a lot of trust in him. And he wanted to get us on a new point of sale program. So he showed us this little program, and his other customers are on, and, um, and we have a lot of customer hooks, uh, customizations that would hook into it. And, you know, he was going to do all these things, and, uh, you know, we liked it. And he was going to tie in our search, and our, we were going to launch with our um, warehouse management system. That's, that was the whole plan. Well, we could never see a demo. You know, could we see a demo of, of the system? Um, oh, no, I, I'm going to have it. It's going to be ready. It's going to be ready. And we've known him. And, and the contract was kind of loosey-goosey uh, in some ways because we, you know, we had so much history with this person. Well, to make a long story short, we launch and come to find out it wasn't ready. And it was uh, a disaster with implementing our warehouse management system. And here's somebody we trusted. So this is, in, this is outsourcing, but it's somebody that we've known for many, many years. So just because you're friends with someone, or just because you've had a really good history in the past, it doesn't mean that they're going to be good in the future. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't see deliverables. You know, if somebody says they're doing something, you should see it. If, even if you, you know them and you trust them, if it's, your, if it's your son or daughter or whoever it is, if they're not showing you something, there's a reason. And I think it's hard, too, because you know, here you get to know people. And again, uh, the, it's hard to be objective. It's, your, it's our websites. And it becomes very personal sometimes. And I think sometimes you just have to draw the line and, and make it as businessy as you can. The unfortunate thing of that, too, is the contract was loosey-goosey. So he said, she said, they said, we said. Because we've known him for so many years. I, I don't, I, I'm, contracts are keep us safe and keep them safe. It's just you just want to control your outs in the contract. You want to control your payments. You know, if you can lessen it or spread it out or whatever you want to do. Um, well, because of that, and you, we learned all these things, we're, we're done with custom software. I don't know if, here if anybody uses custom software, but we were done with it. And um, we're going to go mainstream, and we're going to do this right. So we're going to get Magento. And we're going to cross every T and dot every I. And we're not fooling around because uh, we don't want to deal with this anymore. So with Magento, you have to get a developer. So we go on Magento's website, and we're only going to get the best of the best. So we, we look and see which ones that they have the Magento gold, and they jump through whatever hoops Magento wants them to jump through. Whatever we could do, that's what we're going to do. So we, we narrow it down to about five. And um, we get bids back and forth, and we got this one that was really, really detailed, and it was good. Lots of information. And um, they weren't the, definitely weren't the lowest. They weren't the highest. And uh, we just said we're going to go with them. So that's what we did. And um, things went along pretty well. We, we, loved, we could log on their uh, interface and see our stuff, which was really nice, because before, we didn't see anything. So here, we got to see something. So I was like, oh, we're getting something deliverable to us. Um, well, early on, we started having meetings. Um, we would go with the gut. And um, anybody who's ever replatformed, we talk, for some reason, we were talking about 301s. We were just talking about things down the road. And they're like, oh, you don't need 301s. And I was like, well, we have to have 301s. Oh, no, no, you don't. We've never done 301s with a, a website uh, platform change. And I was like, well, we're doing 301s because we've had a website for over a decade. So it got fairly heated. <laughs> And guess who were on the phone with that night? The CEO and his team. And um, he basically said, no, no, we do do 301s. And um, they misunderstood what you were saying. And um, it's part of Magento and you know, yada, yada, yada. So um, we were like, OK. So um, we moved down the road. But, but things kind of like that kept happening. And um, it got to, got to a point where we were going to get credits. 
you know, we're going to, you know, he's going to step up to the plate. He's going to do this. And, you know, we had a, a, our contract terms with payments and we're like, can we lessen this payment? And, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm working it out. Well, it never happened. You get to a point where, you know, it's all nice to say you're going to, you're going to do something, but if you don't do it, then it doesn't mean anything. So finally, um, we said, you know what, we're just going to fire you. And we, you know, here we are thinking we got the best of the best and everything would be wonderful. We wouldn't have any problems. Well, the problem what happened was they had all our money and they had all of our stuff because they locked us out of the interface. So, you know, here we are again thinking, you know, we had every base covered. I never would have dreamt that this would have happened. It took several months of negotiating to get our stuff from them. Looking back, I would definitely have gotten deliverables. I would, and in fact, I'd have even have that in the contract. I want deliverables. I don't care how you get them to me. I want them in my hand because I'm not going to trust if you decide something goes wrong, you have all my stuff, and it's kind of like you know you're holding my stuff hostage to get whatever it else is you want. And that was a really really tough situation. It's it's it sours you to a degree. I've talked to people here, um, you know, asking all the questions. It's it's because you don't know. And I can't tell you, I've talked to other people, you get a team that uh, they're going to work on your stuff. And um, when you finally sign on, you get on with them, all of a sudden it's not the team, it's not the same people as you had signed up for. So, you know, you kind of ask that too. Are you going to be specifically on my account or is it, are you going to switch it to somebody else? And I think that happened to us too, um, where a team was switched. And we noticed a, a problem with um, our results for our pay-per-click didn't know that the team switched and there, because that wasn't communicated uh, things uh, things that we didn't want to happen happened um, so those are those are the five things that happened to, to us and my oh, my takeaways first is do your homework I, I can't stress researching enough I can't stress enough talking to people here um, Google anything you can, Facebook anybody, anything you can. Find any amount of dirt that you can um, on anybody beforehand. And you'd be surprised what, what people will uh, say. You just have to read and dig. Um, you, have to, you know your site better than they do. Um, I, I don't let anybody tell us anymore. We don't, that they don't, we don't know our site or make us feel like we don't know what we're doing. And I always look at the cancellations and always check contracts. I mean, has anybody here ever changed a contract? A lot of people are no. Yeah, does anybody know, did anybody know you couldn't? Because uh, I, can't, I can't, again, I can't stress changing contracts enough. It's a tall tale sign if they're willing to work with you. Um, I've talked to a few people here and they're like, oh, we'll, we'll, we're willing to, to negotiate. And you have to decide what you're gonna fall on your sword about. Sometimes if, it depends on how bad you want it. In the example of the, the 60 days, if I had to do over again, and they wouldn't move, I, I either wouldn't go with them or I put something on my calendar 90 days, it would flag me to, to change it. Um, but I don't like a 60 day pre uh, year uh, that I have to notify them that they want out. And I would say always have a contract. Um, I think some people feel good they don't have a contract, well that backfired on us big time with a friend. So I mean, can you imagine if it's not with somebody that you're, you're friends with and you've known for years and years and years. And I think, you know, listen to your gut. If your gut's telling you something, it's telling you for a reason. And I think it is difficult because it's our website and you only want to make the right decisions and, and so forth. But if you're, if you're feeling something, you're, you're feeling it for a reason. And, and get deliverables in your hand. I mean, if somebody's not willing to give you something, um, you're giving them money. Um, they should be able to give you something in return. Does anybody have... Um, any questions? With regard to renegotiated contracts, we do that with everything. But we do like two layers. We do the initial one where I do the rewrites, and then once we do that, we send it to the attorney for them. They do the rewrites. Do you guys not do back and forth to your attorney? We've done that before um, with attorneys. Um, sometimes that gets difficult. Um, we probably should have done the one, especially with two different states. But yeah, we, we have. But that, you know, then it's, that, you have to tie that into your cost, too. But yeah, I'm, we have done that before. And was it successful? Uh, that's just our policy. We, uh, I review every contract, and then once I list in the things that I specifically want changed, in other words, because I know my, my cycle, 
we're always checking cancellation dates, reason for cancellation, reason for out, uh, what our liability or their liability will be. We always look for things other than uh, uh, the, the major things where they say you can only exit for this particular cause where we'll say other types of things. And then we would go through the standard contract, we would write those in, and then I send my marked up contract to the attorney. The attorney will almost always come up with a series of things that they want and things that are only attorneys understand. Mm. Then we send it back to their people and then we ask for a list of what they'll do and then typically what that ends up with is we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this to this point, we won't do this at all. Then we do a second cycle with the attorney again. And so contracts take a while. Mm. But at the end of the day, we have a contract and, and, and we know that every contract has been read four, five, six, seven different times before we, we, we sign it. That's definitely a good policy. Hi, um, great presentation, especially because I'm in the process of trying to outsource a number of different elements of our site platform redesign. So have you ever been in a position where you do have an internal team that possibly thinks that they can do the job because they're thinking of it as a new challenge, but you'd prefer to um, outsource. And if you have been in that position, how do you, how did you handle the internal politics of kind of telling people the news? You mean telling the telling the outsource company? No, telling your internal team that you would like to outsource as opposed to using the resources they have. Okay, um, I think basically. You, because you don't want to hurt, you know, people get their feelings hurt or feel like you're taking away their job. I would just say, we're, you know, we're going to outsource this for a period of time, see how we do. The other thing I like about stuff like that, or uh, if you can, you can also outsource for a, uh, just a, uh, three months. You know, pay-per-click, you don't have to outsource for years and years and years. You can outsource it for six months, bring it in for a year, outsource it. So you could also tell them, you know, we're going to try it and see how it works. And if we don't like it, we'll bring it back in the house. But maybe those people can get used in other, other areas instead of wasting their time if you can outsource, because you could save a lot of money outsourcing. So hopefully that helps. Question. Uh, great story so far. Um, I was wondering if you have any advice on how to ensure you get a good team of people, whether it's for the implementation or ongoing support. <laughs> we always thought we, thought we had a good team, too. Um, I would. It, it, depending on if you want to handpick the team, if they say we're going to have these people, I would almost have it in the contract, okay, I want those people. If there's going to be a change, I want to know there's going to be a change. And if they're competent, if they're not competent, um, yeah, you definitely want to, want to um, you don't want to get teams switched. So I would definitely, knowing that, I would have it in the contract. I don't want my team switched. If it's switched, I want to know about it. Because they'll, they'll definitely sell you on one team and give you another team. So they're going to go where the buck goes. And that's just the way it goes. And you know, the people that have deeper pockets, they're going to get the, the better thing. But if, it's, if you negotiate it, then they're hopefully stuck. I'd rather them be stuck than us, to be honest. Is there anybody else? Like, uh, w w what do you mean? In one of my examples? Yes. It was it was provided. It didn't it didn't it didn't work. It was a kind of waste of provision, but okay. which should have been another gut. You know, this doesn't seem to be working. But there, we you know, in that situation, it was hard because we we did our research had a lawyer look at everything, did everything we could, and it, every, it still failed, which was, was shocking. But we should have gone with our gut. Um, and that's what's, that's what's hard. But that was difficult because we figured we picked a, a really good program, we picked a really good developer, so it must be, you know, it's got to be us. Um, it can't be them. You know, that's, that's where I think is difficult. You know, you're always questioning. You end up going on the window anyway? No. No, believe it or not, it was such a bad experience. We're uh, going to move to something else. So, and I know you can get Magento, people are like, you can get Magento developers in India. You can do this. You can do that. And we're like, nope, we're going we're gonna to go with uh, whatever Magento says. So we you know, even tried to do that, and that still failed. How did you find the right, right 
Um, that's that's a, a good question. I think what we learned through that too is it wasn't the, the there's so many different shopping carts. It isn't the shopping cart, definitely it's the partner. And we really, really like this one partner, um, actually in their local. Um, we liked them, we always wanted to go with them, but they didn't do Magento. And that's the only reason we didn't go with them. Not because we didn't like them, we, we thought they did such a good job, but we wanted Magento. So we just, we just learned, it's like, no, it's, it's definitely the relationship and the partner that they work, we just like their work. And you know, looking back, it would have been a lot easier, but it's just difficult. And then other, other partners, you know, you have to ask them when, you're, when we're replatforming. What, you know, are you going to be able to tie into this one easily and this one easily? And of course, everyone loves Magento. You know, Magento, you get a green light on everything. Uh, so when you go something different, then you have to constantly ask. Make sure that it's going to work with this platform, or then you've got to change um, who you're outsourcing with. Anyway. All right. That's all the time we have. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>